bless you. And God bless the United States of America. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. The interesting thing to me about the role of religion now is, is what we're not hearing. It's the dog that isn't barking all of a sudden. Uh, the problem that Mitt Romney's had is a lot of um, particularly Southern Baptists or Christian fundamentalists don't take the Mormon church as being Christian. The stained glass ceiling is really what we're facing at this point. And if a Mormon succeeds in, in getting elected president, that's uh, another religious barrier that will have been broken. When you ask people to respond, you know, what comes to mind when they think of Mormons, they don't have a lot to offer. On the negative side, you'll hear a lot of people offer polygamy or some variant of that, which is, you know, 100 years out of date, uh, but still persists as kind of a stereotype. We heard from a couple of people who had been Romney supporters who went door to door. They were part of the, the ground movement. And they contacted us to say what happened is that they were going door to door in uh, Christian, you know, Christian neighborhoods and people were, as politely as they could, slamming the doors in their faces. He's a Mormon. I'm not voting for a Mormon. One thing that a Romney candidacy, but especially a Romney presidency would do, if he, if he were to succeed, on and off we would spend some time hearing about Mormonism because our president is Mormon, and it would serve to demystify it a little bit. happen to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and, and my Savior, but I know other people have differing views and I respect those views and don't believe those qualify or disqualify people for leadership in our, in our, in our nation. If you, if you ask if Mormons are Christians, my answer is emphatically yes, but that answer supposes a particular definition of Christian. So my definition of Christian is somebody who espouses a belief in Jesus Christ. And uh, based on that definition, Mormons clearly are Christian. We believe in Jesus Christ. He's central to our theology. But an evangelical Christian looking at a Mormon uh, can't help but notice some very obvious things that aren't, quote, classically Christian or traditionally Christian. For instance, there's no trinity. Uh, you know, for evangelical Christians, like actually most Christians in this country, they pray to the, quote, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit um, as a tripartite way of looking at who God is. That's not a concept in um, the Mormon tradition. And that's, I think, the essence of where the trouble begins, right? Is, is, is it that that's a major theological difference that is very meaningful. It's not, I don't think it's so meaningful for politics. So Mormons and evangelicals, to some degree, actually get along on questions of politics, on things like gay marriage and abortion and, uh, and other kind of social issues like that. For, for years, decades really, for most of our history, we were a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant country led by white Anglo-Saxon Protestant males. And the male thing is still fairly dominant, but the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant part isn't. The candidates for the Republican Party and the Vice President of the United States are not Protestant. None of the members of the Supreme Court are Protestant, nor is the Speaker of the House Protestant, or the, or the Democratic Majority Leader of the Senate. We're in one of the strangest times in American history. If you want to get an interesting slice of American myths, you ask people the question about religion and politics and you often get this answer that, oh, we're such a religious nation and it's so terrible that we may be becoming more secular. The fact of the matter is the United States since the beginning, even before it was a country, was a community of religiously diverse people. I live in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, George Washington not only slept there, George Washington went to church there at, at Christ Church. And for a while, um, it was kind of fashionable 
uh, particularly among evangelicals, to suggest that George Washington was very much a practicing Christian and a reminder that that's why Christians were very important to have in office. When you go back, you actually find out that George Washington, for instance, got up and routinely, very carefully and very respectfully, left services when communion was distributed because he was not um, a specific believer on that. But in his writings, George Washington talks very specifically about the importance of religion in public life and the importance of your public leaders embracing the practice of religion and embracing the appearance of being a person of faith. I am not the Catholic candidate for president. I am the Democratic Party's candidate for president, who happens also to be a Catholic. It was a bit uh, astounding that as late as 1960, there was still no Catholic president. That was because people feared that uh, 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 the White House would become a, the, a Vatican in exile or something, that a president would be serving the Pope instead of the American people. So Kennedy had to fight this head on and it would cost him a lot. I do not speak for my church on public matters and the church does not speak for me. But how your faith uh, manifest itself as president matters. Jimmy Carter, for example, during the Iran hostage crisis, when we tried to do the famous rescue of our hostages, um, didn't uh, ordered rubber bullets to be used, didn't want to kill any Iranians in a rescue mission. Um, there's an example of somebody's Christian faith affecting policy. Um, you might argue George W. Bush in the Iraq war saw Saddam Hussein as evil because he was exterminating Kurds. And uh, part of the rationale for going in was to, to uh, his Christian warrior belief in stamping out evil. So uh, the role of religion in, in presidential decision making is very real. The difficulty in doing it is that religion is so personal. In this world where we have acts of terrorism, we have war dead coming back with flags on their coffin, people want to believe that the president is saying prayers for our troops. My Christian faith then has been a sustaining force for me over these last few years. Uh, all the more so when Michelle and I hear our faith questioned from time to time. It was a central obstacle Obama had to get over to make people believe that he was not Muslim, that he believed in the teachings of Christ. About half of voters can correctly identify Obama as a Christian. Uh, I think about three in 10 just don't know. Um, and that leaves the remainder, about 17%, who misidentify him as a Muslim. And we've seen the growth in that misperception, particularly stronger among uh, conservative Republicans. We are reminded that ultimately what matters is not what other people say about us, but whether we're being true to our conscience and true to our God. He is a Christian, but he had to argue it just simply because of his name. Uh, his opponents would put Hussein in there a lot. This is after Saddam Hussein had become the most loathed figure in, in the planet. Um, and so they were trying to tattoo Obama with somehow being different. He is a faithful Christian. He lives it. He acts it. At the same time, he has members of his family who are Muslim. He has members of his family, uh, extended family, who are Jewish. He has members of his family who are Catholic. So he represents, in some way, the type of universal American religion, that religion of, it doesn't matter where you pray as long as you go to church on Sunday. Our polling that we've done has shown that about a quarter of the electorate says that it would be uncomfortable with a Mormon president. But it's also become kind of clear that for more and more as people equate Mitt Romney with being a Mormon, uh, there's a kind of partisan aspect to that. So we found that in our polling, it's a lot more Democrats who are saying that they would be uncomfortable with the Mormon president. It sort of suggested that they would be uncomfortable with Mitt Romney as president than the Mormonism part of it. And it's hard to convince Christians in America, Protestant Christians, Catholics, who are concerned about the economy, who perhaps are natural supporters of the Republican Party, to not support him. 
registered voters, Republican leaners, say that they would choose Romney over Obama, about 9 in 10 do so. With Romney being nominated to the Republican ticket, I think we might actually see a partisan divide. So you're going to see Republicans who were resistant as recently as just a few months ago to voting for a Mormon, who are suddenly uh, coming around to the idea because in the context, the alternative is to vote for Barack Obama or not vote at all. Marriage is a relationship between one man and one woman. It's hard to disentangle the role of uh, a candidate's religious faith from positions on social issues such as abortion and homosexuality um, being two uh, hot button ones right now. I think about seven in 10 to two thirds of voters say that having a president who holds strong religious beliefs is important to them. If you think that religion refers to just a set of doctrines or you know where somebody goes to church or synagogue, is that going to directly impact how they vote? Eh, it's going to play a role. If religion, though even more broadly, describes how they put together the world, what values matter to them, then that's going to have a profound effect on who they vote for. This would be a campaign that would be driven by myriad issues like you know tax policy or Medicare or the, the kind of nitty-gritty of the technical things. And then there are the whole range of issues which to me are always the more important ones, which is kind of a person's approachability, what people feel about his willingness or ability to be uh, commander-in-chief and things like that. It's in that category really that the religion aspect to it falls, which is mainly a, a matter of, you know, how much can I trust this person, how much do I relate to him, uh, is he like me? So religion is constantly playing out, but at the end of the line, most voters don't want to know too much information, they just want to believe that their president believes in God and, and has a spiritual side to them, that they're not robotic and they're not atheist. But what both Barack Obama and Mitt Romney share as does Paul Ryan and Joe Biden, all candidates say, I'm a Christian and I believe in God.